So I've been praying a lot about that God would give me patience in this season um, during COVID, um, but even really before COVID, it's just real personal to me that God would really give me patience. Now, there's a one little problem with that, and that is as soon as I prayed that he would give me patience, he put me through a season of waiting and having more patience, which can be a bit frustrating uh, because you look at your life and you're like, man, why am I here and why am I waiting through this and why do I have to go through this season? And then you remember when you prayed for patience, you're like, oh, God's answering my my prayer. He's giving me this season of waiting so I can learn patience. Um, so, And then for me, I was like, wait, wait a second. I don't know if I like this season of waiting. Do we even need patience? That was the question I asked myself. Like, do I need to have patience? Um, so I started to ask the Lord that, and he led me to the passage we're going to read today, um, James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Um, and I think we're going to see that there is a purpose in patience, um, that God's not allowing us to go through seasons of waiting and uh, this is just taking forever and seasons of difficulty and trial without a real good purpose. And we're going to see it here in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. So let's go there real quick, and we're going to read these couple verses. James 1, verse 2 through 4. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now, trials just means hard times or difficult times. He says, For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Now, for the purpose of this teaching, steadfastness is the word patience. Okay? So, produces steadfastness is produces patience. And let steadfastness or patience have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So let's look at this here, and we're going to see three different insights that I'm pulling from the passage, and then we'll talk about the purpose of patience. The first one is this, back in the passage, that there are divine, if you will, trials that God has, and I'm going to use a huge word here, predestined, for your life. Divine trials that God has predestined for your life. Um, And so what the word predestined means is before the foundation of the world, before God said, let light be light and let uh, night be night and let the birds uh, fly in the sky and the lions roar, before he created anything, I believe that he has predestined. That means he has made trials and hard times for you specifically. Now, that sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? It's like, wait, why? No, 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 no. Why would God allow me to have trials? Why would he plan out trials for me? Why would he plan out seasons of waiting and suffering and things like that? That doesn't make any sense. God's a good God, right? But I would show you that actually a good God would plan trials for you because there is a purpose in your your patience. And for patience to happen, we have to go through a little bit of pain. We have to go through a trial. We have to go through some waiting for God to bring about this perfect result. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But I wanted to point out that in this passage, it says, when you meet trials of various kinds. See, there's a meeting there. But in the NLT version, remember there's different versions in the Bible. We're reading in the ESV right now. There's this NLT version that we read from some sometimes, and it helps us to understand this even more because it says, consider it an opportunity for great, for great joy. So when you meet trials, it says, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, to me, that just sounds crazy. What, what do you mean, consider it an opportunity to rejoice when I go through trials? No, I'm not going to rejoice in trials. I'm going to have a bad attitude. Like, that's normal, right? But not in the Bible. The Bible says, no, consider it an opportunity to have great joy because God has predestined that you would go through seasons of waiting and trials so that he can bring out the purpose of patience, which we will get to here in a second. So that's the first thing we have to know is that God has predestined these trials for our lives. You know, I used to uh, hate going to the dentist. I hated when my mom would make an appointment for me to go to the dentist because I never liked when the dentist would, you know, do the little thing in your tooth and drill down and it would just feel uncomfortable and it just made me feel all weird. So I hated appointments to the dentist because it would cause a little pain. But I started to learn that if I avoided going to the dentist, the little pain that I experience now would turn into a massive pain and I wouldn't be able to handle it. So the dentist actually became an opportunity for me to say, I'm, I'm getting pumped up. I'm going to have joy because it's going to take away this pain so that I can have some joy and some freedom. 
So that's kind of like what a trial is. There, it, you're going through a little bit of pain. It's like going to the dentist. It's a little tough. It hurts a little bit. We kind of don't like it, but it's an opportunity to get rid of the big pain that could come. So any season you find yourself in, if it's like, man, Simeon, this is difficult. I don't like the fact that I'm in eighth grade and I still have, you know, however many years left of schooling to get done. I don't like this anymore. Or I don't like the fact that I'm going through a breakup with somebody and all these difficult things we can face in middle school and high school. If I don't like that, the truth is God's allowing me to go through that so that he can keep me from a bigger pain. So we need to consider our pain and our trials as an opportunity to rejoice. Because like a dentist who's taking away the pain, God's taking away the pain by allowing us to go through a little bit of pain and trials. So here's here's the second thing. Trials plus faith equals patience. I really like this because it, it gives us like an equation. One plus one equals two. Trials plus faith, it equals patience. Patience doesn't just happen automatically right it doesn't happen automatically you have to put it into equation for it to, hap- to for it to come about watch this in the passage it says for you know that the testing of your faith so testing is the trial of your faith it produces which means it equals steadfastness remember the word steadfastness is patience so let me interpret for us trials plus faith equals patience so you want to be a patient person you got to get that equation going in your life. You've got to have two things, a trial, a hard time, a season of waiting, something you don't like, something that hurts a little bit. You have to have that trial. It's, it's essential to have that. Then you have to add it with faith and it will equal patience. Okay, so we have to have faith and we have to have trials. So now we look back and remember I was talking about how could a good God allow me to go through trials? Not even just that, but predestined and plan out a trial for my life. How could, That doesn't make any sense. Unless you look at it like that. God wants to do something even bigger in your life. He wants you to, to be able to endure and to have a greatness about you. But he can't bring that in you until you go through a trial and you couple it and pair it and add it with faith. Our trials have to go through a season with faith to bring about this amazing result of patience. Okay, And it's, it, it's like he's saying, look, you're, you're going to become this gold, this amazing gold. Nobody wants to just be dirt, right? We want to be gold in life. We want to uh, shine like stars. Uh, we have so many songs that even kind of say that, that we want to be these superstars, right? But he's saying you can't have that if you don't go through some of the fire of a trial. And it hurts a little bit. It's a little painful, but you're going to come out like gold. And you, but it, it can only happen through testing. But remember, you have to have faith. You have to believe in the process. That's what that means. Trial hard time plus faith equals patience. Trial hard time plus believing plus knowing God is good. I can trust him in this. This hurts a little bit, but I'm going to keep going. If you add that with your trial, you will have patience. So now I hope you understand that a trial and patience is a good thing, right? Or let me say it this way. Trials are good things because they develop patience. So now we don't run from trials. We don't run from hard times. We don't run when we're, we're living in the house and we want to get out and I'm in 10th grade and I can't wait to go live on my own. But, but God's saying, no, that's a trial. Endure it because it's developing something amazing. Okay. But what is the ultimate purpose of patience? Because your trial plus your faith equals your patience. But what's the purpose of your patience? Is there a result in patience? Because remember, I've been saying I've, I've been praying for patience in my life. I want patience. But then all of a sudden I start going through these trials. I'm like, wait, I don't know if I want patience because is it even worth it? Does patience have a purpose? Patience does have a purpose. Let's look at the last piece of our passage. It's going to show us the purpose of patience. He says, and let steadfastness, remember that's patience, and let steadfastness or patience have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So I hope you really saw that in the passage there, that there's a purpose for patience. He says, let it have its full effect. That means let it continue. Don't run away from the trial. Don't dip. Don't say, I'm out. Like I quit. Don't quit. He says, let it happen so that the purpose of patience can come about. Now, what is the purpose of patience in our passage? I hope you see it. I'm going to point it out. It's right here. It says that it may be perfect. It may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The purpose of patience, guys, in your life is that you would be perfect and complete. 
The purpose of patience in your life is that you would be perfect and you would be complete. Okay, that doesn't mean you don't have sin. That doesn't mean you're, you're, you're a superhero or something like that. No, but it means in what God is doing in your life right now, the season of waiting, the, 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 the tired of the, the fact that I want to come out of COVID and I want to meet up with people or I want to leave the house or I can't wait for school to end or I can't wait to be in a relationship. I can't wait to be married. All of those long seasons that are just like, why do I have to go through this? There is a reason God is allowing you to go through it. It's so that you can be perfect and complete in that specific thing. Okay, so if, 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 if God is calling me to be single for an extended period of time, it's so that I can be perfect and complete in my marriage. If God is calling me to go through school and I've got to go through elementary school, the middle school, then high school, and maybe even college, it's so that I can be perfect and complete and ready for life. Okay, a lot of people just run, want to run away and say, oh, I, I quit, I quit this, and I quit that, or I quit relationship, I quit school, I quit those things. But the truth is, now you're not perfect and complete, ready to be effective in that thing. So it's very difficult to see this as a young person. I include myself here because I'm still young. Um, but it's difficult to see this because we're all going through these seasons of trials. But if we were to ask our parents, they would tell us. And if we were to ask our mentors and our different people that uh, we look up to, they would tell us, look, no, just stick it out and keep going. Don't quit. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. Don't be frustrated. Just keep going because you're going to be happy. You're going to look back one day and say, I'm glad I didn't quit. I'm glad I stuck that out. And why do they always say that? Because you're going to be perfect and complete in what God is calling you to do. You're going to be ready to face life. So guys, Middle school, high school, super, super important times to endure and to be able to take that trial of just school and that faith of believing God is good and he's going to work it for my good and see that patience and never running away from the patience, but allowing the patience to last and to work its way to completion and perfection. That's what we need to know as a youth group. That that's why it's an opportunity to rejoice. When I find myself in seasons of waiting and seasons of trial, I'm like, I'm about to go back to seminary. I'm like another four or five years of school. I don't know if I could do this. But if I find myself in that trial, I can say, wait a second. I don't need to get mad at this. I should rejoice because I have faith enough to know that the end of this is going to be amazing. I'm going to be ready to be a pastor. I'm going to be perfect and complete, ready to do this job. So I hope that encourages you in maybe a season of difficulty or any time. You may not even be in a season of difficulty right now, but trust me, they come back and you know this. It comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. So next time you even find yourself in that season of frustration and tiredness, I hope you can remember that your patience has a perfect, it has a purpose and it is perfection. That's it. So I want us to, I want us to, if you have a piece of paper or you're taking notes, whatever it is, I want you to write down. Um, the season right now that you find yourself in, and I want you to note, is it, is it, is it, is there a piece of it that you have to have some patience in, right? Are, are you in a season where you're like, I need to be patient in this, or I need to be patient in that. I need to be patient in my schooling. I need to be patient in my relationships. I need to be patient in my job. If I'm working a job, I don't really want to work here. I'd rather be out here making a ton of money, but you know, I'm only 18, so I have to work this job. And do I need to be patient in those areas? so that God can work perfection. So write that down, that one specific thing that you need to be patient in. And then I want you to just pray over it. I want you to pray over it that God will give you the endurance and the strength to rejoice in the midst of that trial. Um, because once we rejoice in it, we can start to have better perspective and we can start to see, oh, God's working it for my good. This is actually a really, really good thing. So Lord Jesus, thank you so much um, for allowing um, trials to come in our lives. Thank you um, that we're able to embrace them instead of run from them because we know that trials plus faith, it actually equals this patience that you're working in us. And we don't want to run from patience. We want it to have its full effect. We want to endure the season. We don't want to uh, numb it down with doing a bunch of bad things, but we want to endure it out so that it can be perfect in our lives. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. And it's in your son's name we pray this. Amen.